What a way to end a call than to shoot your own partner. This video comes out of Lafayette when officers go to a house to serve an arrest warrant. When they're leaving, a dog attacks one of the officers who accidentally then shoots his partner in the back. Let's watch this video, break it down because there is a ton to learn from it. This is the Shots Fired Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Mark Redlich and to my left is Kyle Schobert. At this point, this call for service is done. The officers are on their way out of the house, but one of the officers still has his gun out it's elevated, it's flagging his partner, and his finger's clearly on the trigger because a dog ends up jumping on him, which startles him, and he ends up pulling the trigger and shooting the officer as she's leaving. She has no idea at this point if she's been shot or if she's been tased, and she in ultimately ends up falling to the ground, which causes these officers to completely panic. So let's watch this video, and then we're going to commentate as we walk through this. Okay, so there's a lot of confusion going on right now. And like you said, the female act, the female cop doesn't even know that she's been shot right now. She thinks that she's maybe been tased. Do you have your taser out? He's asking if the taser was out. Hey, relax. Did she have your taser out? Right here, right here, right here. All right, so they identify where she's just been shot, uh, which is in the back, just outside of her vest. So. These guys need to start doing some medical attention now. Yeah, absolutely. It, and what you're listening to is some of the audio, and they're saying that an officer has been hit. And we talk about communication all the time. And, and think it, and put yourself in a position where you're hearing this on the radio. All you hear is an officer has been shot. But in this scenario that we're watching, there is no suspect. There's no outstanding suspect. It's, a, it's a, an officer that's accidentally shot their own partner. That needs to be communicated so officers don't respond in a panic. Yeah, come on, baby. Come here, baby. It's okay. They're also trying to trying to identify that's where an officer's this officer has been shot. So when you provide my medical aid, the absolutely the number one thing is you've got to strip that car. gear, get that off, and identify right if there's an entry wound and if there's an Here exit wound. In this case, that, they're not doing that. They're kind of just trying to drag her around. Put pressure on that. On her back. So I don't know. This this guy just decides to go running off. Maybe he's going to go run to his car to, to get her out of there. But, I mean, he's running quite a distance away. And I don't even see his car in this video clip at all. So maybe he was going to flag down his partners, which is what he's doing. But he's exerting a lot of energy right now. And he could be helping his partners. Yeah, the focus should be on her. There is no outstanding suspect. You can identify on the radio because there's multiple officers there and coordinate that and get those officers and medics to her. We talk about making the decision, do you stabilize and wait for medics or do you do an immediate transport? And it looks like in this point, they're going to do an immediate transport, like an evac of this officer. But they still have not stripped the gear and they have not clearly identified what the injury is. We know she's been shot like under the armpit in the back. You've got to seal that thing up right away and you've got to hope that there's not an exit wound. They're loading her up in the car. This is incredibly difficult to put somebody in a car and try and provide medical aid. They've obviously made the decision to do in a medical evac. That's what their plan is. So they've established a plan, but they're doing that. But they haven't taken the gear off and now they're stuck in the back seat of a patrol car. Yeah, so let's touch on that real quickly. So if you are gonna make that choice to vac evacuate a cop and do medical aid in the back of a police car, this is in the middle of the day, might be a little bit easier because you have more light. Um, I was in a situation where I had to help an officer who was also shot. And it was nighttime and we were, I was trying to provide medical aid in the back of a police car while we were transporting him to the hospital. It is extremely difficult because as you all know, in the back of a car, a police car, there's no room to do anything. And so you really have to have the wherewithal and the discipline to know even how to conduct medical aid on somebody. But even to do it in really tight quarters like that takes practice. And we advocate in the class that we teach, if you're going to do that, at least practice doing that in the back of a uh, police car. And usually when we ask that question in a class, how many people have actually trained that? Not one person raises their hand. Right. And I think in this situation, the number one priority is to strip the gear. We keep going back to that. Check to see where the entry wound is and seal that up because they keep moving her around. And you're going to see that more and more in this video, which is causing her to start to breathe heavier, which starts sucking air into her body, into her cavities, which is going to start collapsing her lungs. And this, is, this situation is is just getting worse. Get us out. So the, luckily they got a medic on scene with what seems like less than a minute. Yeah, it was quick. But they just drove around the corner and now they're pulling her back out, having her walk too. Come on, baby. You're almost there. Come on, baby. Let's go. 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 Let's
Like she's she's physically getting exhausted at this point. I mean, she's collapsing and they keep trying to pick her up and put her in the car. So think about in those situations, that's the whole point of these breakdowns. If you're gonna provide and make the decision to transport or stabilize and wait for medics to respond, in this situation, they you have an ambulance on scene within a minute. They're they're wasting time, which is causing her to cause to, to sustain more injury. Okay, so in the video, you guys can see that the, these officers just, they, they panicked and they didn't know what to do and they kind of were just running around all over the place. I think the biggest, one of the biggest takeaways is the communication that after the officers were shot, like you said, not putting out who shot the officer because if I'm an officer that hears that over the radio and I hear an officer has been hit, I'm thinking that a suspect shot that officer. That's gonna completely change how people are gonna respond to this particular call. So I think one of the takeaways for me is the communication discipline. Absolutely, communication is huge in this, but also providing medical aid. We know there's no suspect in this situation. She falls on the ground, we've gotta strip all the gear off her, cut the clothing off if you need to, identify where the wound is, and then if it's cavity or through the body, you've gotta put a seal on that thing, see if there's an exit wound. And at this point, they don't do that, and it's incredibly frustrating to see that, especially they keep dragging her around. They did make a decision to do the self-transport, but there's an ambulance right around the corner. All of this, there's a lot of really good talking points and takeaways from this. It just comes down to communication, discipline, and really knowing what your roles and responsibilities are. And in this case, you've got to have somebody that just takes control and starts assigning responsibilities. And we did not see that in this. Yeah, and I just can't come up with a good excuse for the officer that shot his partner. I mean, the fact that he's flagging her with his own gun, his gun is even out in the first place when they're leaving the call and the fact that his finger was on the trigger and ultimately shoots her just goes to show the, the lack of training and discipline. So hard video to watch, a lot to learn from, and it's things like this that we like to showcase because we don't wanna see it happen to somebody else. That's why we conduct these types of breakdowns. It's a debrief and a learning tool. So that's it for today's body cam breakdown. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. See you later.